Good morning, Millican. This is Patrick Hoban, uh, Millican alumni, following up with our uh, final video of the semester. And this is uh, just a lot of miscellaneous advice that I really wish I knew um, back when I was uh, a student there at Millican, even before. So this is something that Candace asked me to do, um, just to throw in. It's all some of the anecdotal things that I normally bring up when I'm talking in person. Um, so let's go ahead and cover some of these. Uh, right off the bat, um, I love this one. You know, wisdom comes from learning, learning comes from experience, and experience comes from making mistakes. So you guys are all the time in your life where you guys can make mistakes and um, just go out there and try, fail, fail early, fail fast. Um, you have plenty of time uh, to recover. Just be careful on, like we mentioned in other videos, what you're uh, documenting online. Uh, bottom line though, the lesson is uh, win or learn. Um, whenever I was younger, I really got hung up on uh, some of the times that I had failed and I let it weigh on me. If you want to see more of that, uh, I was a commencement speaker um, at Millican. That is online. I think if you just go to YouTube and Google uh, Patrick Hoban, Millican University, that speech will come up and you'll see uh, how many times I did fail. And it took me uh, quite a while to recover um, to get where I'm at now. Um, but the bottom line is I wish that I'd known this and that uh, basically there's uh, you learn more um, from a failure than you do from a win. And it was actually something that was pretty frustrating. It took me a while to figure this out. But when I was at uh, Notre Dame, they always talked about the aha moments. You know, we're here to give you aha moments because um, whenever you fail at something, you try really, really hard and you can't get there and you finally figure it out. It sticks with you. Uh, it was really, really frustrating to me because we were taking coding. And so we'd be coding marketing analytics using R, um, spending three, four hours on one problem, just writing this code bumping all over ourselves and then we get to class and they would they just have the code and it's just like well, why don't you just give me the code you know be, i would have got there so much quicker but that wasn't the point um, the point was to struggle with something and then learn from the mistakes along the way and it, it definitely sticks uh, so that is actually something that i wish i would have had at the beginning of that course um, about the aha moments but also um, same in life itself Next couple categories um, that I wish I would have known about is just the whole uh, healthy, wealthy, and wise. I divide them up into three separate ones. I think this is hilarious coming from Benjamin Franklin because he was not healthy and he sure as heck didn't get up early. Uh, but it's uh, still a pretty famous quote. Um, a lot of you already know about physical health. I mean, that's taught to us, you know, since we we're very young with PE. I think nowadays, especially, we really need to focus on the mental side of things. Um, one of the big disclaimers that um, I could have kicked off the whole social media thing with is uh, the impact that it actually has on mental health nowadays. There's a major issue with the whole fear of missing out and um, looking at other people's highlight reels because, you know, as we post, as we share things, you know, I was, I was guilty of it. I would, uh, anytime I'm out and about, I was always looking for more content um, instead of really enjoying the world that I was in and then all the images that I would share um, really made our life look absolutely wonderful. Um, and then I would uh, notice along the lines that I had friends that were um, down in the dumps, but it really took me a while to uh, realize that. And sometimes I realized it too late. I had uh, literally uh, ran into friends of mine, you know, on the street and they seemed to be doing well. Um, friends with them on social media and bragging about how great life is. Um, you know, and they'd always say, you know, how are you doing? I'm living the dream, Just kind of joked about it and um, ended up uh, overdosing actually you know, uh, years later from that. I had no clue what was going on, um, but this is a major concern um, going forward. I know people that are in this field. I know people that have dealt with this. Um, it's just, it's, it's all ages, but really, really hitting the generation that's being brought up on it. So I'm not sure if it's impacting you guys, but I know I have personal experience with this. It's a major concern. So um, just, just be mindful of that whenever you're on social media. Uh, but the answer to that, though, um, for me, was uh, nothing has meaning except for the meaning you give it. So it's it's all it's all on you. I mean, there's there's so much crap that's out there right now, positive and negative, um, um, even when you're dealing with people. But it just seems to be amplified now inside of that echo chamber um, that is social media. Um, so again, just be mindful. Um, this one, we accept the love that we think we deserve. Uh, I was just trying to think of something to go in with the uh, the wealthy side of things because for me. You know, whenever it came to salary, like I started off my career at, you know, not minimum wage, a little bit higher than that. Um, but I, that's what I thought that I deserved because I didn't have a, you know, formal full college education, didn't have a degree. Um, living in Decatur, there's just a certain mentality that, you know, if you make a certain amount of money, then you're going to be happy. 
Um, so, you know, I kind of spun this over. Um, awesome movie. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but it also goes along with, you know, the model that kind of spun off of that, you know, from Rocky, another, another great movie. Um, that if you know what you're worth, you have to go out and get what you're worth. And at the time, I had no clue what I was worth. You know, I was a bartender, um, college dropout, and uh, I finally graduated. So I had this degree. I lived in the cater and didn't know, you know, what econ dev really paid. I saw what it was in other communities, um, but not there. And uh, slowly just started testing it. You know, that's why I started making some career moves and, you know, made the jump to the city of Decatur. And I was happy. I was making $75,000 a year. And according to um, the internet, you know, at the time, it said that, you know, that was like the, the, your exceeding average. So that was a really good salary and a salary that's supposed to make you happy. And then I started looking around in other communities to see what people are making. And there were people making like 250 up around Chicago. And I was like, man, can I make 250? Um, so I made a move, you know, I jumped for a higher salary and sure enough, I was worth that. And then, so I started looking around and is there another opportunity to make even more money? And yes, there is. Am I worth that? I mean, you're, you're basically going to make, you know, whatever you think that you're worth. And now, you know, I'm looking at things and there's consultants out there that make $500,000 to a million dollars a year. I'm like, so you can probably take a guess on what my next move is going to be, but you know, you really have to uh, take a look around and uh, just for this, for this lesson, um, don't settle. And uh, when you do start making money, I really wish I could go back in time and, you know, tell myself to uh, divide up my salary, um, the different things. 50% uh, of that should go to necessities. I'm not a financial advisor by any means, but man, I wish I knew this. Um, definitely play. Um, I go see concerts, go, go out there. You're going to remember the experiences much more than the things that you own. So 10% of that should go to play. 10% uh, should go to charity. I mean, honestly, you know, if you can find out things that you believe in, uh, this is one that I'm really trying to you know, bring home to my kids the fact that the more money we make, the more uh, money that we can give uh, towards things that uh, they're less fortunate and that we believe in. So 10% to play, 10% to give, 10% um, to long-term savings. So with long-term savings, uh, throw that, you cast the budgets, 401k, whatever, check out Robinhood. It's a great app right now. You know, check out those uh, index funds. You just throw money in there, great time to invest. Um, also, the financial freedom account, if you guys have debt, 10% on financial freedom and 10% on education. And I keep, I want to say this over and over and over, uh, keep investing in yourself. Just because you have that degree, there are a ton of people out there with a degree. Go get more um, accreditations on top of that. Uh, so you've got your 50% necessity, 10% play, 10 to give, 10 for savings, 10 for financial freedom. And if you have that financial freedom done, you know, you're, you're out of debt, awesome. Um, 20% in the savings, you know, 20% long-term, 20% short-term, but always 10% education. Don't forget the educational piece. And then uh, as far as your knowledge goes, the why side of things, um, what you focus on will expand. Like if you focus on negative things, you're going to see more negative things. You go out and buy a Jeep, you're going to see Jeeps all over the place. It's just the way that the world works. Um, if you want to look for positive things, you're going to find the positive side of things. And uh, you also have to know, uh, I mentioned the echo chamber on social media. That's exactly how social media plays as well. Um, if it's, it doesn't give you the latest, you have to actually select on Twitter and on Facebook to give you the latest news. Otherwise, it knows how long you stare at a post. If it's a negative post, it's going to keep feeding you negative posts. Um, life is the same way. If you want to, um, for me, like I've, I've always been a huge Chicago Bears fan. I know so much about the Bears, probably more than most uh, probably more than I should admit, um, but I always wanted to work for the Bears, and so I just kept checking their website, looking for different opportunities, and a couple of years ago, landed a job at Van Services while I was still doing Econ Dev, working for the Bears, and I got in there and actually worked for uh, Virginia McCaskey's granddaughter, um, and I got to go to the Bears games for free, and I just showed people where their seats were, and I got to hang out at the stadium. It was a really cool experience. Um, I guess I say that because that was a hobby of mine. I just kept digging deeper and deeper and looking into it, and same thing with uh, me finding that degree at Notre Dame. I knew that analytics was going to be huge going forward just because of my background in marketing. Huge Notre Dame fan. Uh, have been since I was really little. And as I got up to Tinley Park and I started looking around on how to invest in myself, I found this opportunity. Never, ever thought I would get a degree from Millican. Never thought I'd get a degree from Notre Dame. Um, but I found a way. I kept going uh, to campus before... You know, I ever uh, had a shot there and go to games, a uh, huge fan, like I said, growing up. And I found opportunity because it's what I was focused on. And um, it really opened a lot of doors for me. So again, what you focus on expands. So be very mindful of your focus. And then the last ones uh, I wanted to go over, um, probably could have started with this. 
Um, but, you know, another aha moment type deal. If you're looking for a place to start, you know, the, those whole three different things, uh, developing your range on um, what you should be posting about, what your careers are, check out 16personalities.com if you haven't already. It's uh, based off Myers-Briggs. It'll uh, basically just give you, it's a starting point. This is not the end all be all. Do not put yourself in a box, um, but this will give you some ideas uh, to really match up, you know, your personality with what careers you might be interested in. And then um, follow that up with your strength finder. Uh, just figure out, you know, what you're good at. If you, take, if, you, if you just ignore all these options right now and you just say, all right, what do I do on the weekends? Like, what do I enjoy? The last thing you want <clears throat> is to uh, make a mistake like I did at a young age, but that's when you're supposed to make mistakes. You know, I was, uh, had this vision of myself being a lifeguard because I thought being a lifeguard would be really cool, good way to pick up girls. Um, but it, it looked like a really cool job. And so I went through all the classes, got certified, was getting ready to take the job. And then I actually went um, to the pool one day and I just watched the lifeguards and they were babysitters. And I was like, that's not what I expected. Um, so it, it was a mistake. It was something that I didn't um, look too far into, but I didn't take the job. Uh, bottom line is because I should have did a little bit of research in the beginning uh, to see what it was that they entail. Uh, but you, you, this is a way for you to um, test something out, try to figure out just a starting point on where you could go, what your strengths are, what you enjoy doing. Do not get stuck in a career where you loathe your job. You know, that, that would be terrible. I know friends of mine that did. I know people that got four-year degrees in um, teaching, and then they taught for like one year and was like, I cannot stand this. So they got out of it, and now they sell insurance or something like that. But bottom line is uh, find out what your passion is now and um, kind of go forward with it just as a starting point uh, because that will change. And I, I want to talk about the box side of things uh, because – Another downside of social media that you guys are going to be putting in yourself out there and uh, developing this brand, you got to know your, your brand's got to evolve. Uh, I brought up this story with Ashton Kutcher uh, just because he did, I thought he did a decent job when he made the Steve Jobs film, but he had been typecast from his earlier days on the 70s shows, um, Dude, Where's My Car, um, doing punk just as being this, you know, all, all comedy all the time. And he was on social media so much, one of the earlier adapters that he had built this brand that nobody could take him seriously because he was, uh, he was basically typecast. And so he had wished that he had not put himself out there so much. Um, I guess the, the, the lesson behind this is just to have balance on what you're putting yourself out there. That's why I still push the three, have three topics that you want to be known for. Um, even myself, I don't know, I'm not typecast, but I mean, one of my brands is being a numbers guy. And um, that's, that's not the brand I want because a lot of times the numbers guy are the guys that you know, are you know, in their basements um, uh, working on different things and are not really the outgoing leadership type. And that, that's, not, that's not what I wanted. And actually um, looking back when I was in high school, you know, I was a football player and a wrestler and um, captain of the football team, whatever, but kind of got stereotyped as the dumb jock, which pretty much pissed me off because at the time I was an art major and I went to ISU and I was in all the art, art courses and everybody asked me if I was lost, um, which I took offense to that. And even later in life, whenever I was a bartender, I was working on a website for somebody and uh, one of the tech guys came into the bar and asked, said, hey, you know, I'm here to talk to uh, Patrick. And they pointed at me and he was like, no, Patrick, the webmaster. And, and you know, it's, it's again, you know, you're going to get that stereotype uh, for whatever situation you're in. But it's, um, it's one of those things, that, again, go back to the Nothing has meaning except the meaning you give it. Um, but for this, your brand is what you're going to put out there online. So be very careful about how much you go in one direction or another um, and really keep your range. And that's why I think that I fell in love with economic development because there's so many different aspects of it um, that you can be good at, whether it's the marketing side, the relationship building side, networking's huge, um, communication's huge, um, but leadership is also uh, very important and where Millican has helped me out. Um, also, disclaimer, with the Strength Finder and with the uh, personality test, I recommend you, you know, doing it now just to get a starting point, but then going back and doing it later. I guarantee you five to ten years from now, I'm going to watch this video and be like, what the hell was I telling those kids? But that's just, just the way of the world. So know that you're going to involve and uh, know that um, to keep investing in yourself, to learn as much as you can and to grow from there. I just don't go too far in any direction. Um, don't go all in. You know, you know that's a, a way to get that typecast scenario. And uh, just with, with anything, when it comes to the mental health side of things, the money side, just stay balanced. I guess that's the best advice I can give you and wish I would have gave myself at the time. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I got for that one. 
Um, but yeah, this is a quote uh, from one of my favorite and kids as well, is I can't go back to yesterday because I was a different person then. Um, so for now, that's what I got for this semester. If you guys got any questions, um, look me up on LinkedIn, um, any other advice for books to read or whatnot, um, I'm around. And uh, I wanna thank Candice for having me come back and uh, volunteer for this. It's a, it's a good way to uh, give back to uh, alma mater and um, go blue.